Welcome to this EFT Processing Web Screens launch video. My name's Anne from Orchid Systems. In this video, we're going to run through what screens are available in this first release of Web Screens for EFT Processing, the prerequisites for EFT Web Screens. We're going to download, install, and activate the modules needed. And then I'll give you a demo of the EFT Web Screens released in this first release. In the first release, at the end of May 2021, we are releasing the following screens. In EFT Transactions, create EFT file. In the EFT Transaction Reports, you are able to print or preview the transfer details and print the remittance advices. In the EFT Setup, you are able to set up options, banks, customers and vendors, and email message templates. And in the periodic processing, you are able to delete inactive records. The prerequisites for EFT web screens is that you need to be on an EFT processing subscription license and you need to be on the latest PU for EFT processing. For version 2021, you need to be on PU 3 and above. And for extender, you need to be on PU 9 and above. Extender needs to be installed and activated in all companies requiring the EFT web screens. You do not need a license, you do not need to purchase Extender in order to run EFT web screens. But if the customer does have a runtime or configurator or developer license already, then they are able to run EFT web screens as long as they have an EFT subscription license and PU9 of Extender has been installed and activated in the appropriate companies. And for System Manager, you need to be on PU2 and above for version 2021. We're now going to download, install and activate EFT Processing and Extender. I'm using version 2021, so the latest PU for EFT Processing is version 3.0 and I will be applying a subscription license. And the latest PU for Extender is PU 9.0 and I'll be installing Extender without a license. And then I'm going to demonstrate the EFT web screens. To download ORCID's modules, first you go to ORCID.systems, log in, then go to the product downloads. Select the version you want and then you download the modules you need. In my case, I'm going to be downloading EFT Processing. And Extender. And after downloading, we can go ahead and run the install shield. If you already have EFT installed and a license already on that particular server, it will pick up the license for you and pick up the programs directory and the shared data directory and install the programs for you. If you're installing EFT processing for the first time, then you would key in the serial number and the activation code. To get access to the web screens, the serial number needs to be a subscription serial number. You now get this warning. If you're using ORCID EFT processing web screens, you need to ensure that your site is secure. And it will go ahead and install both the desktop screens and the web screens. and then you need to install Extender. From PU9 and above, Extender no longer prompts you for a serial number and an activation code during the installation. You will fill these in after activating in a company if needed. For EFT web screens, you do not need a serial number and an activation code. You only need a serial number and an activation code if you are going to be using other features of Extender. 
After downloading and installing Extender and EFT processing, you need to activate the modules. Depending which PU you're on for EFT processing, you may or may not need to activate that, but you do need to activate Extender in all the companies that you want to run EFT web screens on. So you go to Admin Services and select the activation, data activation and activate PU9 of Extender and PU3 of EFT if you're prompted to do so. If you're running Extender without any license files, you will have the setup menu with options and the license screen. And in the options, you are able to see what updates you're on and check if there are any new updates available for you. And in the license screen, you are able to enter a serial number and activation code if the client subsequently purchases Extender. But this is not required for EFT web screens only. After downloading and installing the latest PUs of both Extender and EFT processing, you are now able to run the web screens. So using the browser of your choice, in this case Chrome, and you log in to the appropriate company. So EFT has been activated and configured in this company and the user Anne has access to EFT. And we can now see the appropriate menus. So in the periodic processing, we've got the delete and active records. In EFT setup, we've got options, banks, customers, vendors, and email messages. In the transaction reports, we've got transfer details and print advices. And in EFT transactions, we can create an EFT file. We have seen if we download, install and activate the latest PU of EFT processing, and we have a subscription license for EFT processing, and the latest PU for Extender, whether you have a license for Extender or not, the web screens are enabled. And all these steps are described in the EFT training guide. If you go to the section on the web screens, it describes to you how to install the EFT web screens and how to use the EFT web screens. I'm now going to demonstrate the functionality of the web screens in this first release. Using the Sage 300 web screens, and I'm signing in as admin to a company which has already had EFT activated and configured, you can see the EFT menu down the bottom here. With regards to security, it's still set up in admin services under the users and the security groups. So here you would select EFT processing and assign the different functionality to the different security groups. And then depending on the security group that the user is assigned to, they will have access to the appropriate functionality. Within EFT processing, if we start with the setup, in the options, you have your tabs for configuring EFT for AP, the AP email address, EFT for AR, the AR email address, and the functionality is pretty much the same as the Sage 300 desktop screens, except on the default advices. When you are selecting a different advice report, it is providing you a finder within the ELXXA directory, plus the reports in the configured customization directory, if any. So you must put your customized remittance advices in the customization directory. And as a reminder, refer to our help for the difference between the ELPAO1, PAO2 and PAO3 default remittance advices for EFT payments. And we have the global file sequence number tab if you're using that and the updates tab. You can use these breadcrumbs to navigate to the other setup screens, in this case EFT banks. This hamburger icon gives you a selection on all your banks that you have already configured in EFT processing. Whereas this finder gives you a finder on all the banks in common services.
So if I select CCB, which I've configured already, I would see those settings. With EFT files, when you create EFT files, if the IIS user does not have access to the folder that you need to create the file in, then you could select to download. In this case, when you create the EFT file, it will prompt you to download that file and save it somewhere locally. But if you leave it as file, then the IIS user needs access to this directory. And there is no finder on this directory. So if you do need to fill in a directory using the web screens, you need to copy and paste from Windows Explorer. And just like the Sage normal screens, you can navigate between your open screens using this view as well. In the EFT customers, again, you have the hamburger to show you all the customer records that have already been configured for EFT processing. And this finder shows you a finder on all your AR customers. Similarly for the vendors. All the vendors that have already been configured in EFT processing. Whereas these two finders are on AP. So that's AP vendors and remit to accounts within the selected vendor. And the last icon we have in the setup menu are the email message IDs. And a reminder again in both the F1 help on the desktop screens or in the online help for the web screens, you have all the messages that you can include in the different remittance advices and you can use this to copy and paste those details into your email template. And now we have a number of screens open in the open windows list. Under the periodic processing, we have the single screen, which enables you to clear down EFT records for customers and vendors where the customer and vendor no longer exists in AP or AR. And as you are using the screens, they are building up in your recently used windows as well as in the currently open windows. And for the reports, we have the transfer details and the print advices. The transfer details enables you to print transfers done in a date range or in an, a creation number range. And as per the Sage report object, this PDF will get downloaded to your local drive where you can save it wherever you need to and then open it up to view the contents when you need to. And the transfers created gives similar information but just one row per transfer created. With the print advices, you can select whether you want the delivery method to be vendor or customer, that is, will it be an EFT email, address or the customer or vendor's email address or print destination in which case the PDF will be downloaded as we saw with the transfer details. We're going to select vendor or customer delivery method and do an AP payment batch and select our, our email message template for the remittance advice and I'm going to do batch number one. Because I've done it previously I'm going to check this box and go ahead and either print or email the AP vendors remittance advice depending on the setup in EFT vendors and on AP vendors for the delivery method. In this case, there are two emailed advices that have been sent to vendor 4540 and 1450. And if we go to look at our Outlook, we will see those two. 
So this is the remittance advice temp email template that we had selected. And if we go to open this, because we've got password protection turned on, I need to type in the password to the PDF before I can open up the email remittance advice attachment. And in this case, it was just the vendor ID. And for the create EFT file, I'm first going to go and set my bank to enable the file to be downloaded. So I can show you that functionality. And then in create EFT file, if we choose a batch for bank CCB, our normal message, because I have already exported this batch before, and now it has created APA1.CPA and I'll save it where I want to, to subsequently upload this file to the bank. As a reminder, it, both in the training guide and in the online help, you have both the ins how to install the EFT web screens and how to use the EFT web screens. Thank you for your time in watching the Spotlight on EFT web screens, how to install and activate and use EFT web screens. For more information on EFT processing, extender and other ORCID products, please go to orchid.systems.